In this lecture, I'm going to talk to you about where does the energy in stars come from. We learned in the last lecture about luminosity, which is the total amount of light given off by a star each second. And that's an amount of energy. We could add up the energy of all of the photons that are given off by a star every second. And that would be the luminosity. So that energy has to come from some place. Energy isn't created or destroyed. We learned that in physics. So energy has to come from someplace. What's the source of that energy? Now, in ancient times, people had lots of ideas about what the sun was. Some people thought it was just a hot, glowing rock. Um, eventually, it was realized that over time that would cool down, and so it couldn't be that. Um, people thought maybe it's just it's fire like we have on Earth, like maybe it's somehow burning wood or coal or oil or something like that. And it's a fire, but again, the fuel wouldn't last long enough. If you figure out what the mass of the sun is and how long the solar system has been around, there's no way that you could make a mass of anything combustible um, that's that much that would last long enough. And so in the 20th century, this is fairly recent, so in the last hundred years, we eventually were able to figure out that it was nuclear reactions that are the source of energy. These are chemical reactions that happen in the nuclei of atoms, so things going on between the protons. Now, there's two kinds of nuclear reactions, and the one most people are familiar with is fission. These are good vocabulary words. Let's highlight them. Fission is the way most nuclear bombs work, and this is the way all of our nuclear power plants work and anything like that. This is when you take a large atom like uranium and you split it into smaller things. That's what fission is. Uh, nuclear bombs, like the bomb that was used on Hiroshima, used fission. Our nuclear reactors also use fission. But there's another type of nuclear reaction called fusion. You've got to know the difference between fission and fusion. Fusion is when you take small atoms and combine them into making larger ones. If you're familiar with hydrogen bombs, they basically are fusion bombs. Actually, they're a combination of fission and fusion. Um, they use fission reaction to trigger a fusion reaction and get one started. Um, in stars, what you have is pure fusion. And the nice thing about fusion is that there's no radioactive material left over. You know that like in nuclear bombs or in nuclear reactors that we have on Earth, you have radioactive material left over that we have to dispose of, and that's not an easy thing to figure out what to do with. But in fusion, the results are just normal gases like helium, and helium is perfectly safe. It's not radioactive or anything like that. So this is why a lot of people would like to learn how to do fusion more easily. It just turns out that it's not easy to do. It requires so much energy to make it happen that you use more energy going in than you would get coming out. So it ends up being actually a waste of money. But if you could ever come up with a way to do fusion cost effectively, that would be a great solution to all of our issues with electrical power. Now, the concept behind fusion is that mass gets converted into energy. And this is where Einstein's most famous equation comes in. We all know about E equals mc squared. Everybody knows E equals mc squared. But they don't necessarily know what that means. Well, the variables in this, E stands for energy, m stands for mass, and c is the speed of light, and you have to multiply that times, or times itself. Um, just like in kinetic energy, we have 1 half mv squared. c is our speed in this case. It's the speed of light. That's getting squared. What this equation tells us is that mass and energy are really sort of two sides of the same coin. Mass can get converted into energy, and energy can get converted into mass. You're not used to thinking of mass is something that can be destroyed. You can think of mass as something that gets changed from one kind of atom into another, or electrons get converted into uh, electrons of a different element, or something like that. 
That's not what happens in a nuclear reaction. In a nuclear reaction, some of the mass literally is completely gone. It no longer exists. It becomes pure energy. Um, here's the process that this takes place in, in the sun. Now, you don't need to memorize this, but you sort of want to get a sense of what happens. And the overall thing that happens is that four hydrogen atoms, and hydrogen atoms I basically mean protons, are going to become a helium atom with two protons and two neutrons. So let's follow this along. Here's two hydrogen atoms, those are two protons, and they smash together. And several things come off. One is an isotope of hydrogen that has a proton and a neutron. Now to get this to happen, you have to get rid of some electrical charge. You have to get rid of some of the positive charge to make a neutral neutron. And so one thing that's given off is something called a positron, which is a particle that has the same mass as an electron, but it's got a positive electrical charge. This is actually what we call antimatter. Antimatter is th something that's the same as normal matter, except that it has the opposite sign electrical charge. Another thing that gets given off is called a neutrino, which is a small massless particle. They're completely electrically neutral. They move at the speed of light. Um, Millions of these things pass straight through you every second. Uh, new, neutrinos are everywhere, and they don't interact with normal matter very often. So you can have these things going through you, and you don't even know it. It's happening all the time. So when these two hydrogen atoms hit each other, they make a hydrogen isotope with a proton and a neutron. They make a, a positron, and they make a neutrino. That isotope hits another proton, and so that then combines to make helium. You have two protons and a neutron. And in the process, you also give off a photon, which happens to be a gamma ray. This whole process happens twice. Then these two helium nuclei, each of which has two protons and a neutron, those smash together. And what you end up with is helium that has two protons and two neutrons. So that's an isotope of helium. And two of the protons separate off and go off by themselves um, as hydrogen nuclei again. So the overall effect is that I started with four hydrogen atoms and I end up with one helium atom. The interesting thing is that some mass gets lost along the way. The mass of a neutron is not quite the same as the mass of a proton. A little tiny bit less. In chemistry, you learn that they're basically the same, and they're pretty darn close to the same, but they're not quite the same. And that little bit of mass gets converted to energy. And where do we see this energy? Well, uh, photons, they have some energy. So some of that gets converted into the energy that's in the photons. The rest of it just becomes kinetic energy of all of the various particles that go flying off. All of these things have some kinetic energy. So the mass actually gets turned into energy, and you lose a teensy tiny bit of mass. Teensy tiny, tiny bit of mass gets lost and becomes energy. And the amount of energy is given by E equals mc squared. So that's where the energy comes from in the sun and in any other star. All stars use this process to make energy by fusing hydrogen atoms into helium atoms. That's the big takeaway from this lecture. Stars make energy by fusing hydrogen atoms into helium atoms. Just so you can see how E equals mc squared works, uh, one example problem. This is number six in your packet. So suppose I have one gram of hydrogen. That's a lot of hydrogen. Hydrogen is very, very light. One gram is a huge amount of hydrogen. Um, I went ahead and converted that to kilograms because that's the units we're going to want. And we're going to see what would happen if I took all of that and converted it into pure energy. Now, in fact, the same calculation could apply to one gram of anything. If I took one gram of water and converted it into energy, one gram of iron and converted it into energy, you would get the same amount of energy because we're going to use E equals mc squared. 
So I've got my mass, and I've got c squared. C is 3 times 10 to the 8th. I've got that programmed in my calculator. So I'm going to plug in for the mass, and then I can plug in for C and do the math, and you get 9 times 10 to the 13 joules. That's 10 trillion joules. If you had 1 gram of something and you could completely convert that into energy, you would have 10 trillion joules worth of energy. That is a ridiculously large amount. But then think about this. The luminosity of the sun is about 4 times 10 to the 26th joules every second. So this kind of process is happening trillions of times every second in the sun. Huge amounts of mass are getting converted into energy. And so this is where all of the energy from the sun comes from.